Welcome to this short video where we're going to show you how to use Loop AI perfectly. Not only that, but you'll also learn how to get the most out of it. This tool might seem confusing or a bit hard to understand at first. Let's start with Creative Mode, which is ideal if you work with illustrations, digital art, or renders that need more texture and detail. I wouldn't recommend using this mode for portraits or faces. And although it maintains the general structure of the image very well, it is not designed for fidelity. Extreme. The first thing it asks for is the prompt. Here, you can write a brief description of the image. This helps the AI add coherent details and improve the result. In my case, I'm going to upload this image and use the automatic prompt, so we'll click on Detect from Image. Basically, this means the AI will generate the automatic prompt by describing the image. The scale factor is how many times you want to enlarge the image in pixels. A 2 times scale will double the original pixels. And 1 by 6 by 6. The higher the scale, the better the quality, but it also uses more computing time and credits. Next, Lupa.ai has some predefined presets, and in this case, the standard one is Apple. I always recommend using it for all types of images because it works really well. But if you have an image like nature, anime, art, or portraits, you can try adding these presets. Because honestly, your image will turn out much better if you use one of these presets. If you're not sure, just leave it on Subtel. You can also enable the pattern option, which is not activated by default, but it makes the results stick more closely to the original composition, ideal if that's what you want. If you don't want the AI to stray too far from your image, then we move on to the settings. These parameters are very, very important, so pay close attention. The creativity parameter controls how much the artificial intelligence can invent. Higher values can add surprising details, but if you go too far, it might produce weird or inconsistent results. Resemblance indicates how much the final image looks like the original. If you want it to stay very true to the original, turn it up. If you prefer more creative freedom, turn it down just a bit. Higher fractality increases the complexity of the prompt and the small details of the image. For example, if the image is a rose and in the prompt we use photograph of a rose with a high fractality value. Smaller details, similar to those of a rose, can appear within the main flower. It might look a bit chaotic, but it can be useful for artistic purposes or for complex images. And finally, we have dynamic, which is used to add more details to the image, making them more defined. I recommend leaving it at zero, but you can play around with it. Let's hit upscale and wait for the result. And here we have the finished image. Honestly, the level of detail it adds is impressive. Incredible. Here are some example images for you. From the creative mode, so you can see different examples and use them as a guide. Now let's move on to high fidelity mode. High fidelity mode is designed for a very specific purpose. It makes your image clearer and sharper without changing its original details. It's perfect for blurry or low resolution images, or ones that are slightly pixelated. The good thing is that it really sticks to the original image. However, if your image is already high quality, this mode might actually cause it to lose some details. And here we can see some examples of high fidelity and how it improves blurry results. It's incredible, it doesn't change or add any kind of creativity to the image. Honestly, it does this and respects it very, very well. Within this mode, we have face recovery. If your image contains blurry or low quality faces, this option is highly recommended. The AI automatically detects faces and reconstructs their features, improving eyebrows, eyes, and mouth. But without changing the person's identity. This is, without a doubt, the best mode for retouching faces. What I've also tried, and I recommend it, is that if you activate face recovery and improve the image, you can also run it through high fidelity again, this time without activating face recovery, and it gives the image that extra level of detail. Look at how this portrait is improved, it's incredible. Now let's move on to Flux mode. Flux is one of the most versatile and balanced modes in Lupa AI. It works well with almost any type of image art, faces, renders, even text. What makes Flux special is that it allows you to generate high quality results without visual errors. Those AI glitches you might see, like in the image you're looking at, would disappear with Flux. Once you've uploaded the image, 
you can write a prompt to improve the results even more. I always recommend doing this. It's very easy to do, and you can even do it automatically by clicking on Detect from Image. Next, we have the Scale Factor. The Scale Factor is a multiplier for the original pixels of the image. If we set it to 4x, it will multiply by 4. The original pixels. So, if the image was 1000 by 1000 pixels, it would end up being an image with 4000 by 4000 pixels. And finally, you can choose the level of creativity. The higher it is, the more freedom you give the artificial intelligence to transform your image. This can result in more visual realism, but it can also make it stray a bit from the original. If you want something faithful and precise, keep it low. If you're looking for a deeper enhancement, try increasing it little by little. Advantages of Flux Mode, it works well with almost all types of images and produces sharp and stable results. We're going to click Upscale and see the result. Here's the result. Look. The details and quality of this image. Honestly, Flux is becoming one of my favorite models. The realistic mode isn't a traditional upscaler, it's what we call a style transfer. It turns fake images, illustrations, and renders into images with a completely realistic look. I've tried it with a bunch of images, and it works really well with interior renders, e-commerce products when you want to give them that real-life feel, technical drawings, jewelry, prototypes, architectural plans, basically any artificial image you want to bring into the real world. Once you've uploaded the image, unlike in other modes, the prompt is absolutely essential. Here, you can use it in a more creative way to transform your image precisely. For example, let's try it with this piece of jewelry. We type in that. We want it inside a fish tank. With this prompt, you can ask for anything that changes the background of the image. You can ask it to add extra details, like I do. For example, if you have a garden in a render, you can tell it to add grass or to transform any architectural plan into a realistic space that changes the lighting, and honestly, it does a great job respecting everything you specify. And the other quality is a premium option that we added recently. This multiplies the final quality, reduces visual errors, and achieves a more solid result. If you notice that faces are maybe blurry or the details aren't very well defined, you can activate this option. Honestly, it's going to turn out really, really well for you. Let's hit up scale and see how it transforms this render. And this is the final result, honestly. It turned out really, really well. Thank you very much for watching this video, and honestly, I think this tutorial is going to save you a lot of time. Although I have to say, the best way to learn in loop.ai is to do it on your own and try out different things at the same time. Keep experimenting until you get the results you're looking for. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.